All right, coaches, welcome back to Big Drew the World. I'm Coach Allen. Before we get going, I'm just updating you where we're at. We are at our spread series. I'm sitting here actually late at night making sure I get this video out to you all tomorrow to stay on time, stay on task here. I'm getting ready to go away for vacation next week, so you'll probably see some uh, late night looking videos here coming up soon, probably tomorrow night. Um, big thing we're going to talk about today is we talked about split back beer on Tuesday. We talked about the history of split back beer and sort of how that leads two different ideologies in the spread offense. Well, tonight we're going to walk you through a base play from the split back beer offense. Um, we're going to be focusing in on inside beer and how we do inside beer, um, specifically how we block it, how we draw it up. Beer purist, I'm a no vice. So comment down below how I could have done it better or what you would rather do, um, given the certain techniques. Um, now time to pay the bills. Um, if you are interested, we are launching starting this <clears throat> starting he starting this month, we are launching a consulting business where I can come in, I can consult. As you know, your practice plans, I can give you help there. I can give you help with your uh, aligning your drills for what you do um, position-wise. I just want to help offensive line coaches out there. Um, it's a very small fee. I'm not trying to make a living off of this. I'm a teacher and a football coach. That's what I do. But, you know, if you want some help, you know, some people are asking specific stuff about EDD stuff and, you know, how I schedule, how I allot time, how I do practices. And I think, you know, a lot of that can be done on email. So email bigdrewtheworld at gmail.com. I got that link down in the description. And just hit me up. I want to help. All right. Let's walk through inside beer. All right. So. Basic principles to know with inside beer. Now, I'm back on my board and getting used to it. I liked using some of you saw other episodes from back when I was in my classroom. I liked using a docucam there, but what are you going to do? Now, biggest thing here. I want to talk about the splits. We like to play around with the splits because we can move defenders with them. We move defenders just with the splits that we give them. Okay? So, for example, if I want to run inside beer, inside beer for us is going to be a B-gap hitting play right, in he right here. Okay? I can move and adjust inside beer. For the guard, I'm probably not going to have that big of a split. Tackle might create a bigger split because he's going to be our beer stepper. And then tight end might want to get a little bit wider too because we're going to show you why in a minute. My two guys on the backside, if I'm on the backside, I'm going to stretch it out as well. And now we can play with wider splits. We're going to start with 40 front, okay? 40 front, let's go with two twos. Two fives. Have an overhang linebacker coming down. Mike's going to bump over. Will's going to bump inside right here. Okay, so 43. Get our two safety high there. Okay. What we're going to teach against this, okay? So let's say we're going to run inside veer to the right right here. Okay. His tailback's aiming point right here. He's going to look to hit the outside hip of the guard. And as he's running, brush the back hip of the play side tackle. Okay. We're going to go play side here first. We're looking on the tight end. Tight end's going to be taught based on what the technique is on this overhang linebacker to arc release. The reason we want to arc release is it's a great influence block right there. Great influence block. He wants to arc release for safety. This is going to be our pitch read, man. We're not going to mess with that guy. Then here we are teaching veer step or veer block where we're dipping and ripping almost like a defensive lineman to avoid him because he's our read man. And we're going down to play side linebacker here. Um, our guard right here, this is big. He has to get movement off the ball. He has to get movement off the ball right there. Drive that technique back right there. Okay. Our center is going to step right foot and come uphill, most likely cutting off backside backer. 
What are our two guys on the backside doing well? This play's going to hit so quickly. Okay. This play's going to hit so quickly. Their job are to step hard inside, okay, and then come up on almost what I would call the scoop path to get to the touchdown alley to defend the safety and any linebackers that come in trailing. They're aiming almost for this opposite hash is the way I like to coach it. So we're leaving up front, really, when you look at that. When they give us that 50 front up front, that 4-3 with that drop-down linebacker over top of the tight end, we're le- what makes this offense killer, man, is we can run a play and leave four men unblocked up front. You know, and it becomes impossible almost to defeat. Let's take a look at an odd front. Our rules really don't change. It's almost systematic like the wing tee. You know, I know a lot of people just got their rocks off on that one. Just thinking about, you know, a system. Oh, baby. Let's do an odd front. Let's say we drop that overhang linebacker down. Let's say we have a 3-3, which becomes a 3-3-5 single eye safety. Okay. If you want to come down here, that's fine. You know, we're not going to block you anyway. Okay? Once again, if you're stepping right here, bang. Inside, this is almost a nose to Mike combo right here. First man inside. Tight ends down arc release to the safety. Stoop, stoop. Okay? There's your even front. There's your odd front and going against inside veer. Um, the beauty of this play, okay, let's say they give you a bare front. Okay, a couple coach, and I'll give you a couple coaching tips, you know. That way you can say you at least got some money's worth out of the video. Let's say they give you a bare front. All right. And obviously, what we're coaching quarterback on and everything on the read is if you see his shoulder attack and fill the gap right here, you're pulling it. If he sits, his shoulder stays flat, give that ball that run back. Um, let's say we get a bare front. Five, we'll bring the overhang linebacker down. Okay, five, three, we'll give you a single high safety. It runs like six, two there. Um, okay, if they do this, I can still arc release. I can still now. He's almost inside. Got to take man inside to that three technique. Guard got now go up to linebacker. We're here. We're stooping. We're stooping. We're probably going to cut off backside backer with one of our stoopers. But there you go when we're reading him and him. That's how you take care of that. You know, uh, some coaching points here with the arc release, obviously. If he's lined up in this wide nine, we're not going to arc release. We're going to go straight for the safety there. That arc release almost gets that guy coming out and clears that running lane for that quarterback. Very nice right there. Um, trying to think other coaching points. If a man, if we're beer stepping a man right here and he just goes pinching hard inside, that tells that tackle to block him down, and it now becomes for the quarterback an automatic pull read for him. You know, for us, when we run that type of option, he's going to cross our face. We have to take the man who crosses our face at play side for our beer stepper, okay? I'd play around the splits with it. I'd play around. I like how it hits better under center than out of the gun. I know that's a little sacrilegious since I'm an air raid spread guy, and I think my first video was on running the inside zier out of the gun. Um, so it might be a little bit sacrilegious, but I'm telling you, it hits great, guys. Um, next week... We're going over old school TCU, Dutch Meyer, Mayer, Dutch Meyer, um, old school TCU and how that influenced how spread formation really gets started back in the 1940s. Okay. Until next time, coaches, remember if you want to win games, you got to dominate. You got to put up points. If you want to put up points, you got to dominate in the trenches. If you want to dominate in the trenches, you got to remember that big drew the world. I'll see you next time, coaches.